What's going on guys, ZTA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at one of the best $100 phones that I've ever gotten my hands on. Now this is known as the CoolPad Legacy, and the version I have in this video is actually the Boost Mobile version. This is a no contract or prepaid phone, and it's available for $99 pretty much anywhere you can purchase Boost Mobile phones. And to tell you the truth, it's totally worth it if you're looking for a prepaid or no contract Android phone, and you're working on about a $100 budget. So inside of the box you're going to receive the phone, Charger, and by the way, this does support Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0, so it is a fast charging system. And you also receive a USB Type-C charging and sync cable. So when I initially picked this up, I was really surprised by the build quality. It actually feels like a premium handset for a super cheap price. We have a 6.4 inch screen, around back we have dual cameras, flash, and a fingerprint sensor. The screen on this thing is actually pretty decent. It's an FHD Plus at 1080 by 2160 Now it has nothing on something like the Samsung AMOLED displays, but overall, for the price, you really can't complain. On back here, it actually looks pretty good. This is a plastic back, but it's got this carbon fiber design that kind of sets it off. It looks really nice. This does support 4G or LTE. Like I mentioned, this is the Boost Mobile version, but they also have a T-Mobile version, and I believe Metro PCS also carries this device. It's got a full aluminum bezel around it, dual speakers on the bottom, USB Type-C. Over here on the left-hand side, we have our SIM card slash SD card slot, and on the right-hand side, we have our power button and volume rocker. It's running Android 9.0 out of the box, and over the last couple weeks, I've actually had a couple Android updates from the manufacturer, so they are supporting it right now. UI is super quick. This is powered by a Snapdragon 450 8 core CPU at 1.8 gigahertz, and we'll get into the full specs in just a second. I just wanted to give you a quick look here. I've had a couple weeks to mess around with this phone, and I've tested a lot of stuff on it, from native Android games, video playback, to emulation, and overall I'm really happy with it. It definitely feels like a more expensive phone, but you got to keep in mind this is on a prepaid network, and by prepaid I mean no contract. You pay per month, and when you don't pay, you don't have service anymore. There's no late fees or anything like that. And sometimes service can be spotty depending on where you are. But if you're in the city, Boost Mobile runs on the Sprint network and you shouldn't really have any issue with this. As specs go, it's definitely not top of the line, but the price does reflect that. For the CPU, we have a Snapdragon 450. This is an 8-core CPU. All cores are at 1.8 GHz. The GPU is the Arduino 506, and it does support Vulkan and OpenGL out of the box. This is running a 64-bit version of Android 9.0. 3 GB of RAM, and I suspect this is LPDDR3 RAM and not LPDDR4 because it's a little on the slower side. The display is a 6.4-inch FHD Plus at 1080 by 2160 32 GB of internal storage, plus a micro SD card slot, good up to 120 28 GB. It has a 4,000 milliamp hour battery built in with Qualcomm Quick Charge 3.0, 802.11abgn and AC dual band Wi-Fi, Bluetooth 4.2, and a GPS. As for the cameras, we have a dual setup on the rear, one 16 megapixel camera and one 5 megapixel ultra wide. The front is a 13 megapixel, and this will only shoot 1080p 30 or 720/30. It doesn't do 4K whatsoever. The operating system is Android 9.0. Like I mentioned, it is running in 64-bit mode, so those 64-bit apps will work right out of the box. We also have a fingerprint sensor on the rear, and it does support face unlock. Now, when it comes to phones like this and face unlock, I'm not sure how secure it is. I wouldn't trust it like I do my iPhone, but overall, it will unlock your phone. And all of this comes in at $99. When I bought this, I purchased a month of Boost Mobile service just so I could see the call quality and download speeds and things like that. Overall, this is definitely usable, and where I am, I'm kind of out in the country right now. The only service out here where I am that really works all the time is Verizon. I have had issues with T-Mobile out this way, but Sprint seems to work great, so you really need to check your local coverage network just to see if Sprint is working in your area. If it is, you won't have any trouble with this phone here. So now it's time to get into the performance. I've run some benchmarks, I've tested some native Android games and some emulators, and this thing really surprised me. First up, we're going to get into some native Android gaming. One of the big ones right now is Call of Duty Mobile, and to my surprise, it actually works pretty good on this phone.
So I wanted to show that game off before we got into the benchmarks, because when I ran all these, it's really not that impressive. I have three here, Geekbench 4, and 2.2 and 3D Mark. And when you compare these scores to, let's say, an $800 flagship smartphone, they're really not that great. But in real world performance for a $99 smartphone, this thing actually performs really, really well. First up, we have Geekbench 4, single core, 768, multi, 3872. It's a little on the lower end side for that single core, but multi core is pretty decent for the price of this thing. Next benchmark we have is Antutu, overall score, 88,940. And finally, 3D Mark running slingshot for the OpenGL score, 425, for Vulcan, 479. So, as you can see, if you've run benchmarks on a higher end Android phone or seen videos, these are pretty low scores. But when it really comes down to it, I want to show you how this thing really performs with native Android gaming and emulation. So this is one I've actually been playing a lot lately. I personally hate microtransactions, so I don't buy anything. I just play the game until I level up. And when I get tired of it, I stop playing the game. But as you can see, Air of Light actually performs pretty decently on this device. PUBG Mobile's another one that's really taxing on these lower end devices, but as you can see here, I've already got two kills in, and I'm about to get another one. Now I do have the graphics set to the lowest preset, but I have set the FPS to extreme, and I don't think we're quite hitting 60, but it is playable. The phone does have Bluetooth built in, so we can connect wireless controllers. I'm actually using the Xbox One controller here with Minecraft Pocket Edition. There's actually a lot of games on the Google Play Store that natively work with Bluetooth controllers, and this is one of them. I got a couple more to test here. But overall, with Minecraft, performance is great. GTA San Andreas is another one of those games that works with a controller. I did hook up my old save file here, so I've got everything unlocked. This is totally maxed out. I have the shadows on, detail all the way up, and the resolution set to 100%. Perfectly playable. And finally, just a quick racing game. This is Real Racing 3, using that Xbox controller. I also tested Asphalt 9 and Asphalt 8. They run super smooth. And for anybody interested in emulation, I've actually created another video on this same phone here that was dedicated to emulation. I got a lot of stuff in there, like PSP actually runs really well except for the higher end stuff like Killzone and God of War Chains of Olympus. And by the way, the controller I'm using here is the Sataki 7007X. We also have some really good N64 emulation with some of the higher end games like Conker's Bad Fur Day and GoldenEye 007.
You're going to have no trouble at all running any PlayStation 1 game on this phone. And even Dreamcast using the ReDream emulator. If you're interested in seeing more emulation on this device, I will leave a link to that video in the description. So overall, I think the performance of the CoolPad Legacy is actually really great for the price here. At $99, this is an awesome buy if you're looking for a cheap Android phone and you're on a tight budget. It's far from the quality and performance of an $800 to a $1,200 flagship Android smartphone, but for what you're getting at this price, I think it's a great buy. So that's pretty much it for this video, guys. I really appreciate you watching. I will leave a few links where you can pick this up in the description. And if you're interested in checking out more emulation on the CoolPad Legacy, I will leave a link to that video in the description. If you have any questions or you want to see anything else running on this device, just let me know in the comments below. It'd be really cool if you could hit that like button or maybe subscribe to the channel. But like always, thanks for watching.